welcome once again welcome everyone to blender today live or blender today or just just blender today anyone welcome back it's been a week it's been full of stuff actually when i was looking uh during this week of of what to show i was like okay what can i show there are a few things that are pretty interesting there is uh even a uh, new uh, training on the cloud that it was nice to show is actually related to the post library add-on which is it's a, it's a free add-on so I wanted to show it as well, but actually there has been some pretty neat updates on Eevee, so all regarding Blender 2.8 and regarding Blender 2.79, yes, 79 is still among us. There, I think last week I mentioned that there were two, uh, no, there was one main bug that was uh, making this Blender 2.79 be um, release a, a thing, it had to come up. Come up. But actually there is another bug that was announced recently regarding motion tracker i think so yes 279b is going to happen and according to the meeting notes to the blender developer meeting notes that happen every monday same as this yeah what a coincidence uh there there will be one in the next uh, coming in the coming weeks so nothing urgent for the time being but of course you know you can always use a master blender 279 master which it's like 79, but more advanced. Um, it, I don't know, for, for production, you could use it, but if, if you're in a serious production, then maybe stick with 279A and uh, wait for B in a few weeks. So, this is live as like every, every other, every week. So, yes, it can take questions, but maybe what if we just first jump into the, the news, everything, and then we leave the questions toward the end. So, uh, so it doesn't get in the middle and doesn't get a bit uh, distracting to show all the exciting new things that are happening in here. I just wanted to say hi to everyone that is uh, hanging out here at the uh, in the in the chat itself. There's people from India. I was there from the UK, from Spain. Spanish people have a have a live stream in within in one two hours, so uh, I can see you there. But if you wanna hang out here. You're welcome, USA too, Florida. Awesome. Well, let's move then to the questions. Is this Blender yesterday? Blender tomorrow? It should be Blender tomorrow, right? Because it's even, it's even more, a, uh, it's even more advanced. But it's called Blender today because it is actually coming from a website that is called Blender today. Dot today. That that's a URL, and that's where we share news and uh, all kinds of stuff. So, um. What about news? Speaking of news. So yes, as we were mentioning, today is the, um, the today every Monday is the developers meeting when they get together at uh, 6 p.m. was today in um, Central European time. And next week is going to be at 10 a.m. Central European time. So it's Amsterdam or Madrid, Paris uh, time. Um, every other week it changes. It's 10, 10 a.m., 6 p.m., 10 a.m., 6 p.m. So that way other developers from other parts of the world can join and don't have to like wake up either too early or too late. <laughs> so, all right, uh, more news. Code Quest is happening. The uh, the campaign was it is a success. It's not like was, but it actually is a success. The sponsors are still growing. Um, I think last week, I don't know if all of these were present, but actually, yeah, the, the main new ones was Polygon, some... Uh, Got us a platinum sponsor and Lulzbot, the guys that make the awesome open hardware uh, 3D printers. They also support open source and for a while already. So uh, yes, props Lulzbot, thank you. <laughs> and the team is growing. Their new confirmed uh, developers are for the stretch call are uh, Jeroen Bakker, Julian Aisel and William Reinish. More on the uh, UI and user experience part of Blender. So it's getting, uh, it's gonna be busy, it, like literally busy, it's gonna be busy with work and busy with people. The selling of the rockets still going but it will stop uh, fairly soon because it's um, it, it has a maximum um, uh, stock, right? So if you want it, you can still get it, it's 2647. That's insane. People, you're crazy. Thank you for supporting Blender development and especially Blender 2.8, such a such a leap. So yes, 2.8, more stuff. 
there is a, a few updates. Actually, there is, uh, as I was mentioning, one uh, there is a few in EV that make EV faster. There is also regarding uh, multiple object editing, which is pretty awesome. And if you didn't hear of it, it's because Campbell uploaded a video on his own channel. Why not using the Blender developers channel, Campbell? But it's actually pretty cool. I also compiled Blender here, and we can, uh, yeah, we can we can try it here live. I don't know which object, but yes. So that's uh, that's it. Well, there is also talking about the Dev Talk Blender, the Dev Dev Talk forum for onboarding for getting people uh, to talk with the developers, people that are interested in in trying um, to 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 code uh, to do Blender stuff or even to to test, get a bit closer. And somewhere that is not the um, the developer .blender .org, the place where there is uh, patch tracking or bug tracking or all those uh, or design tasks, for example. So that will be um, that will be there uh, pretty soon, rather soon. So I think we can just move on to the stuff. There is also the developers, the the, the official Blender core developers that work for Blender Foundation. They have a a, a list of um, of the things they did during the week. I don't know if you guys check it, but it's very detailed, it goes <laughs> very into detail of what is uh, happening, what they are doing every week. So if you want to know, if you are a Blender Development Fund supporter, if you are subscribed to the blender.org slash donate, which is actually just a redirect to the Development Fund, if you're one of these, so thank you. you want to know where your money is going? It's all here in this beautiful wiki. It's not beautiful, it needs a refresh, but the content is there every week the people working on for blender directly they add their what they're working on and here you can see that regarding Eevee Clement has been pretty busy so not only fixes and stuff it's also um, like some new features one of the features that are one of my favorite is there's the lazy compilation of uh, shaders so you know when you open Blender right now, when you open Blender 2.8, it tries to um, it tries to com to compile everything. So you open the Blend file, it takes a bit. If, if it's a heavy file, it shows shows you the viewport, and it it will be a bit slow because it will try to it will compile the shaders on load. Right, so Eevee, I'm talking about Eevee. So it waits until it compiles everything, and bam, you see it. With this new thing, with the lazy uh, shader compilation, it's not really lazy. It's just taking its time. So it opens Blender with a diff, with a default shader with something fast, and then it starts compiling all. Of, hey, let me show you. It's pretty awesome. Let's open a uh, Blender 2.8. So I've been a bit busy before this live stream. I've been compiling all <laughs> all the uh, all the blenders necessary. I have this one. Oh, object multi mode. Should I show this first? Eh, let's leave it for later as a big one and blender 2.8 and I also have blender master I just compiled Compiling blender is awesome. You should do it if you don't do it you should it's uh, you only do it once you go through the pain of compiling blender once But then you have access to everything you can compile any weird branch you see in uh, in developer.blender.org or anything that the guys are working on the developers and you just use it Cheers, by the way. It's late here. It's nine. I'm I'm allowed. Anyway, uh, let's. Huh? Can we, how can we time this in a way that is reliable-ish? So um, let's see. Let's let me open a new window, a Firefox window. I'm going to uh, Google for what is this? A stopwatch. Bam! All right. I'm gonna make this window always on top. And I mean, this is not the most scientific. I could probably write a script to, to log how fast Blender opens, but I just want to, um, to, to do it quickly. Let's see. So go to Blender um, 2.8 and let's see. Well, the wonder is fairly big. The forest. Let's try the temple. All right, I'm gonna, I selected this. I'm gonna open, I'm gonna start the um, the timer. So open, 
and let's see how long it is this is on my laptop too I probably open something a bit <coughs> more uh, a bit too um, ambitious so let's see how many uh, seconds it, tires, it takes to open it and then it will open it all gray and then it will start bam 15 seconds to open it and here I don't know if you get to see in the screen but up there it says compiling shaders and then scans it bam 23 so 15 seconds to open the blend file and then 23 to um to, to compile it so it was eight seconds 15 23 yes 25 so it's eight seconds to compile the shaders okay that's pretty good not bad eight seconds let's uh let's close blender 2.8 so no cheating here and I open it again and let's open again I'm gonna make it in this window so we see I'm gonna select the temple and then I'm gonna press enter and then move directly quickly to do it and this should take about the same time to open it it should be about the same it's uh, how much was it 15 seconds and then at 23 was everything was loaded so at 15 this should open this is very mathematic precise precision okay 15 bam you should open okay and then bam compiled it finished it's not anymore here in the progress bar so okay took a few a few seconds less that's pretty good it was a really fast and uh, optimized scene i want to try a more dense scene while we keep talking about this awesome stuff open the wanderer this is a 600 megabyte file by the way on my laptop and I'm streaming and I'm doing a bunch of stuff so uh, let, let's give it a try open start and um, yeah this is pretty awesome actually because what it does is saves it caches the materials it saves them on your hard drive so then you can close blender open it okay there nine seconds to open and then it's shade is compiling the compiling the shaders it's, it's up here i don't know if you get to see it i should make the window lo lo uh, longer but it's still compiling at eight nine seconds was when it took so okay it's now 20 seconds to compile the shaders 25 seconds and bam Eight seconds to open, nine seconds to open, and then 31 seconds to compile the shaders. Okay, 31 seconds. So now let's uh, try again. Let's close Blender. Open. And now this one, I believe, is going to be much faster. I don't know how fun this is for you guys, but I'm having a lot of fun with this. <laughs> okay, open the Wanderer. Uh, select, hit, enter, bam. At around 9 seconds, it should open the blend file, and then at 40 seconds is when it finished uh, compiling all the stuff. So, bam, eight, 8 seconds, and then, bam, 11. So, it went from 31 seconds compiling shaders to 2 seconds, from 9 to 11. That is pretty amazing. So, all the shaders are now here on my uh, they're compiled they're saved on my hard drive so now i can just close go open another blend file and then and it will be as fast to open and browse that's it pretty amazing isn't it isn't it oh by the way oh thank you Dalai. they're telling me that my uh, my cache because all of this saved on the hard drive is on my home folder nvidia which we can probably go in uh, my home mv gl cache and yeah there you go that those are the files so if i do pc man fam here are the guys and they're not even big there's just a bunch of little files it's uh, 60 70 megabytes for one of the files that's nothing I would just, just keep saving, Blender. You're pretty awesome. So, good job, Clement. Clement Foucault is the main developer for Eevee. He's coming for the code quest for three months. Imagine, surrounded by other developers. It's gonna be amazing. So, this is uh, this is one of the most exciting things to happen, I think, in the last uh, few days. It was added yesterday. This is insane. 
So, I know, I said I was gonna read the questions later. No, if you wanna ask questions, you can add Blender today and I will read them later because they're all, they get orange. If you say add Blender today, they will be orange and it's easier for me to read. So, more stuff. Well, actually I would, I would keep doing Eevee stuff. It's just so cool. Anyway, by the way, this file is by Daniel Bystead. And the other file, I forgot, but these files that I'm testing here, you can get them in blender.org if you go to the uh, Blender 2.8 page. And then at the bottom, try it yourself. And here you can download all the files that I was testing, both the Temple by Dominic Graff and the Wanderer by Daniel Bystedt. Now with very handy amount of megabytes that it takes. <laughs> Before it didn't have that and it was a bit of... Uh, um, uh, you didn't know how long it would take, of course. Anyway, it's pretty awesome. So, thank you, Eevee. <laughs> Lazy loading and material cache. So awesome. Then, uh, multi-object editing. That's a good one. Let's see, this is on a branch. So I'm gonna run the branch that I just compiled a bit to go. here. So what is this? In Blender 2.8, in the um, works, the, sorry, the, in Blender 2.8, the object, the, the mode that the objects have, for example, paint mode, sculpt, or uh, edit mode, they are stored in the workspace. Instead of the object, before they were just per object, now they are stored in the workspace. So, um, for example, say you want to have you, you have two objects and you want to enter edit mode of both at once. In Blender 2.8, in any Blender basically, you can't do it, except now in Blender 2.8. It is on a branch, so it's not available immediately right now. It's still worked uh, on a branch. It means that it's under development. It's not in the main uh, Blender 2.8 uh, branch of development. It's happening aside just to get um, everything ready, the, the most obvious bugs fixed and not mess with any part of the, uh, the rest of Blender. Um, once that is done, it goes into the main branch. So, easy peasy, how do you use it? Well, one object, two objects, select both, enter edit mode and bam, that's it. You can even edit them. You can even edit both objects, even though this is one object, so let's make it with a, something a bit more obvious. Add a monkey and add a torus. Go to select both objects and edit mode. And then you can, does proportional editing work? Oh, that is interesting. There is a, um, <laughs> there is a thread which I'm not sure which one was it. Developer, the Blender or D, 3C1. And I had it. I had it open. Um, let's see. Put my full screen, but I need to go to uh, another part of my computer just so I don't mess things up. And I have here the link where you can actually read a bit more. There you go. Proof concept multi-object edit mode. What works? What doesn't work? You get all the details here. The um, drawing, selecting, transform crazy space, add and currently working. So, well, that is crazy space. When the space is crazy, that's crazy space. Let's, uh, let's try something more exciting. So, for example, let's select both so th each of these objects are in different um, they're different objects right so select both let's try to unwrap let's first split the window into the UV image editor and let's try to see if unwrapping works yes it works fantastic so you're unwrapping two different objects can I unwrap different parts of the object Yes, that's fantastic. Painting, does painting work? 
Am I messing with this too much? Am I abusing the system? Developers, let me know. So let's uh, front view both. Let's make a small image and let's start painting. And texture paint. Of course, I didn't apply it. Oh, and it crashed. No kidding, I just sh click the shortcut. I press the shortcut to close Blender. I think I'm playing with fire here. Let's see. You can just join the objects together, no? Someone is, is asking, like, instead of just having two objects and selecting them, you can just enter, uh, you can just join the objects. Yeah, but it's, it's, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> there are a few things, well, here of modifiers is probably the worst example to give because it's, um, it's, it's the only thing that in Blender 2.8 doesn't work. One of the few things that Blender 2.8 doesn't work at the moment. But for example, um, there are a few things that are per object. So you have modifiers. You have a subsurf in one object and another subsurf of solidify in another object. So if you join them, the modifiers, you lose the modifiers basically because you will take the modifiers of the active object and you will lose the other ones. So in this case, you can, it's pretty handy because each object has its own world, right? It's its own thing. Um, so that is pretty, pretty useful. And um, yes, you can join and now everything is joined, but then you, you lose it. Actually, I could just show that this is soft sort of modifier and this is a armature modifiers, but you can still edit both. Ah, and it will show you the active, ah, okay. From the vertices from they are and the materials also they should show from yeah the context it takes the context from the active vertice vertex so that's pretty pretty smart um does it mean that the atlas texture atom will not be needed anymore what well, i don't know what is it atlas texture i mean i, I have i heard of it but i didn't even um I didn't check on that. More questions. Will that be able to be turned off in user preferences? What exactly? The multi, the fact that you can select multiple objects? I don't think so. Or should it? What is the, the rationale here? Okay, let's see. To use our mockup design, oh, thank you. Hey Pablo, can you please link to the music playlist you're using? Yes, of course. I'm actually, let's, uh, well, maybe I can do it <laughs> later. Uh, or Yes, and there is a bug with uh, here. Uh, no. There, and what else? There is a new a new video on the cloud about the post library atom, which is pretty nice. I don't know if you have seen it, but you probably haven't because we didn't write, write a blog post yet about it. It was just uploaded on Friday. And there is actually, it's a part of two videos. One of them is a selection sets add-on, which also is built in, in Blender. It's a bone selection sets and the post library add-on which uh, is also available, um, it's on GitHub, actually. It's um, it, it's something that really Blender was missing, actually. So you can check it out. The bone selection set is actually built in in Blender. It's a, I'm not gonna show the whole video, but it's basically a way to select a few bones, create a selection set, name it properly with whatever, for example, face or face details or mouth or hands anything that when you're working with a complex character like in this case Blendrig it's a well the, the character is spring from uh, the spring open movie project going on at the Blender Institute so when you have a such a complex rig you want to isolate some of the um, the bones so this is how you basically we do it with a selection set 
it's uh, in this video of Hialti actually he's pretty nice he ex explains all his shortcuts the way he uses it and uh, it's pretty neat and the post library add-on actually this this add-on is available on github at the moment and it's in the oops the github from Steve Renz Tubal our own doctor at the Blender Institute this add-on was actually made by, by Jasperger based on his um, on an add-on that he made and then uh, see if it worked on it it's basically adding thumbnails to your uh, list of post libraries in blender at the moment you can have a library of poses so when you're animating you have for example certain looks that you want the character to have for example if you want to have your character smile always the same way um, or I don't know something have like a grabbing an object like <laughs> grabbing an object maybe it takes time to do it but it's always the same object it's always the same size and you want to be able to do that post more often so it's just create a post library for that or it's basically it's mainly used for um, well, for actually for everything but it, in the example that Hialti gives here he's oops he's using a oops A list of facial expressions so when uh, spring is happy sad also it allows you to to flip the pose so you can apply the same pose but to the other side if you, if you make half of the face to smile you can flip it and then the other half will uh, follow more questions jump ah the will Evie have render passes well Eevee can be well render passes if you uh, check the latest version the, the, la la the latest and greatest of Eevee when you render you actually render it with Eevee and when you're compositing you already oh whoa whoa materials blender intern oh, okay no I'm in another planet blender internal there you go so in Eevee in the passes you can already enable ambient occlusion mist normal but also the subsurface diffuse and the subsurface for color so yes you have passes in Eevee already you don't even have to uh, let's see if I have graphic bags I'm gonna mess up something this is I was texting the hair I had one let's see there you go this example that I was doing if I'm rendering this with the passes enabled I should have there you go with the passes enabled let's just render this with Eevee and here I can see I already explained this in another um, basically oh no Wrangler doesn't know about these passes so I have to use my my hands I have to do it manually connect the passes so for example this is the um, this is a bit buggy yes this is the AO pass the amino occlusion pass you can also use the soft surface direct so it's a and the diffuse the color so that way you can pick the color and then you can do compositing like just the same way you do it on cycles on our other render engines or blender internal let's let's name blender internal when we talk about this stuff when will light linking be supported in cycles i've seen it on the to-do list does it have an expected date or something not that i know unfortunately the was mentioned by brecht in the um cycles Blend Blender Conference Cycles Blender Conference uh, roadmap roadmap the one what by by uh, Brecht in the list he mentions um, one of the things is like linking so you have custom passes so that would be pretty neat but this conference is from 2016. So it's in the roadmap, it's just not right now.
So you can create a new separate object in edit mode. No, you are... If you're in edit... Well, that's a good question. Let's, let's find out. I'm gonna close this. Start closing a few blenders. Last time I, I had way too many blenders open and then my live stream was started to stutter and yes. Um, let's see. I have one cube. Let's add a monkey. Select both. Edit mode. And then if I add a new... No, I... No. You see, it lets you only choose meshes. And then a cone. And this cone is actually part of the last active object. Or is it? If I select the monkey now. This is my active object. And, and I, I sphere. Yes. Here in the bottom, as always, you can see the active object. Hi Pablo, it's possible to watch the tutorials of the post library add-on on YouTube, thanks. At uh, the moment is only uploaded in the, um, in the, in here, in the cloud. But uh, it's a, it's, it's an open, the, the add-on is open source, <laughs> it's on GitHub, so, and it's not really hard to use, actually I, I could just use it now, make a quick example. Uh, if more people want it, it's still early, so we have time. But not as a tutorial, more as a walking through, showing it, because the the, the video from <laughs> Kialti, and he's an animator, and he has 20 minutes doing it, and I would, wouldn't like to keep to distract a lot of people. I will also explain it in the Spanish video, if you speak Spanish. <laughs> Having object-specific editing, as far as I'm concerned, a strong point in Blender, being able to... Yes, a lot of people were, um, were worried about this. And, oh, what about Scott? Am I gonna crash Blender already? So... Oh, that's amazing. Yes. More of this, please. <laughs> that's nice. Yes, no, it doesn't work at the moment. Work in progress. Look look what happened. This is what happens when you use, it, when you use development builds. Kids don't do development builds. What distro are you using? I'm using Ubuntu GNOME. 17, 10, the last one. Can you explain what the clay render option is? The clay is a, is a render engine. There is a, there's going to be a blog post soon coming up in the code blog. It's, there's nowhere to see, <laughs> nothing to see now, but we're actually working on it together with uh, the live Felinto. We're collecting information about what's what's happening so far in Blender 2.8 and what is the status of Blender pre code quest. So we want to make this with this blog post before the quest and after the quest just to see to, to compare. So we are going through every main topic in Blender 2.8 and just mentioning okay what's how what's the status? How how far is it? Then what's needed? What's what's left? What's the goal of the code quest how is the code quest going to help for example dependency graph what's the status because this you talk a lot about dependency graph but you're not really like okay well where's what's the deal what's going on that's gonna happen soon actually it should be live this week ish if we get uh, our stuff together our act together and with, with that, actually, we'll cover everything. We'll go through... There's one section that is called Render Engines because it mentions all of the engines that are available in Blender 2.8 so far. So, mainly Cycles, what's going on with Cycles, what's the status, what's going to improve. Um, EV, mainly. EV is like the, the star. <laughs> and one of them is the Clay Engine. What's going to happen? Why, why, why is it even there? So, so far, Eevee, uh, Eevee, the Clay Engine is just like a quick version of what you have on the, on the, on the scene. It's basically like a matcap applied to everything. You can, with the help of collections and overrides, you can have different matcaps mascap, per collection, but that was more of like a play field. That's why it was implemented. Something to do fast, but it's probably not going to make it to the end and it's going to be... Uh, occupied by other render engines, for example, the Workbench engine, which is like the solid mode from Blender 2.7, but even better with all the power from Eevee, but simplified even so it's more 
um, is faster to use. So basically it should be as fast as solid mode. But with a bit of the features that you have from Eevee, like shadows, which are useful when you're making a set, you want to have some sort of shadows or contact shadows, for example. Um, let's see more. Um, more questions. Where can we get the info about the various branches that can be built? That's a very good question. Where can you see that? Because in the developer portal, you can see pretty much everything that is going on, but not a list of all the branches. If you do, if you in git, you do git fetch, you get the branches and then git brand, git branch. No, it shows only the ones that I compiled so far. Temp, object, multi-mode, top bar, Chris pencil, user pref. If you read the logs, you can you can see what's going on. It's in uh, lists.blender.org. Um, BF Blender CVS, CS archives. And here actually you can see the uh, first here after the BF Blender CVS and the hash, you have the name of the branch. So that way you can see um, Chris Pencil object, for example, you can see the normal tools. Whoa, whoa, this has been happening now. Where am I? March to, for by date. Yes. How interesting. You see, this is how you discover all the awesome stuff. Normal tools. It's being worked on by Bastian. Anyway, this way is the best way to find out. But if any developer is watching this and they have like special command or somewhere where you can actually see the list of branches that you can build, let me know <laughs> so we can all learn. Let's see. Will there be a NPR add-on, like a non-photorealistic add-on? Uh, that shouldn't be an add-on, that should be built in in Blender. Non-photorealistic rendering is as important as photorealistic rendering, so it should be built in in Blender. Flatty gray theme. <laughs> it's like a dark theme. I'm gonna publish this one when I'm finished, when I'm actually finishing it, but uh, not at the time, not for the time being. Point cloud in Blender for compositing, like nuke um no not that i know it has, hasn't been implemented there were some experiments with point cloud but not like nuke please if everybody knows just let me know i don't know i don't follow it completely <laughs> everything it's impossible to follow everything so please let me know if, if not or leave a comment please watch dreamworks primo on youtube and tell us your opinion I haven't seen it. I don't know if I should. Right now, how how long is it? And um, DreamWorks Primo. This video, two years ago, three years ago, four years ago. Oh, it's been a while. I think I've seen this before. It's the one where it's like um like Presto, where they can click on the the faces and select the part different parts, but then in the end they're clicking. I'm gonna just put it here for fun. Um, I hope uh, YouTube doesn't <laughs> think that this is copyright content. It probably will. Um, yeah, I can't follow it while I'm doing the live. I just wanted to maybe go and spot one part where it's showing Primo, but no. I'm going to continue with the questions. The daily build of 279 is rendering all the tiles simultaneously instead of one by one. Oh, no, 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 no. What do I mean all the tiles simultaneously on, instead of one by one? I just compiled Blender Master and I shouldn't probably be doing this live, <laughs> like start compiling right now. But, uh, oh, Coder was open. And let's, you know, Koro, you heard of this guy before? Well, he's part of the official cycles benchmark, so he should render super fast. Let's see, sampling, 
uh, rendering 10 samples. Let's see if all the tiles go at the same time. And synchronizing. No, they don't go at the same time. They go one by one and my system settings, I don't even have any compute device. And if I had, if I would have compiled with CUDA, then uh, I could have CUDA plus my, um, maybe you have a super fast computer and everything is done at the same time because you have, you can now set up in the system settings, you can set up your CPU plus your GPU. That's pretty neat. I didn't compile with CUDA because I don't use it that much here and it takes a bit longer to compile. Uh, is it possible to make thumbnails on the asset manager management? The asset management uh, asset manager at the moment is not uh, not, not yet in Blender 2.8, but yes, it will be possible. Where can I find tutorials for creating a fleshy ice rig in Blender? I would just Google, um, well, git branch dash r. What the developers dropping some knowledge live? Git branch. Whoa. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my uh, my terminal theme is not the best for this kind of stuff. Let's see if I can just um, make it a bit, a bit bigger. If I could ever make this a bit bigger. There you go. So let's make it like this. Bendy bones, GPU data, request, edit strokes, or scan all the summit of code 2008. Wow, 2009. And here's when the <laughs> when the salad names start: carrot, cucumber, garlic. Tomato, this 2018 tomato branch. This is what later became the motion tracker by Sergey Sharivin, the one and only. That's amazing. Link though, then we realized that it was maybe better if she just had the names of the developers here before, but then it's hard to know which developers were doing what. So then, okay, let's add instead of uh, fruits like in. <laughs> the Blender Open Movie projects like Orange, uh, Mango and Durian, then it was okay, let's do veggies for that. Carrot, cucumber, garlic, pepper. And then it was about salad. There was one that will have all everything together and that will be like the salad one. But yeah, it was, uh, it was a mistake. It was fun while it lasted. There were a few funny um, splash screens. But then this is more convenient. If it says cycles denoising, then you don't have to wonder. <laughs> it's not like reading tomato. And what is tomato? What was tomato about? So pretty handy. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, thank you guys for the command git branch dash r. Thank you, Julian and the lie. Let's see. Flatty gray could be something between dark and light. Yes, yes, there could be. Awesome. So I think we're good for this week. Are we? You can always leave your questions in the comments below. I went through all the new stuff. I shown the multi um, object edit editing, which crashed a few times because it's very early in development. So don't try sculpting or, or texture painting yet. There is a video that is listed in the in the meeting notes that is made by Campbell Barton, the, the developer. So there you get a bit more of a insight because you get to see actually how things work, how they don't work, what works, what doesn't, and um, even the UV projection is there. So yeah, you should check it out. If you want more video development videos like this, you can always check the Blender developers channel. It is the official channel 
of the Blender developers. Here is where all the magic is going to happen regarding the code quest. So we will try our best to, I will try my best together with developers there, I'm going to pester them to make videos often, as often as I can as possible, as humanly possible, maybe not like one hour live streams like I'm doing right now, because yeah, you can do daily one hour, do that at some point you end up, I mean, they, they can, they code really fast, but it's just not, it can't. So the goal is to make uh, videos, maybe shorter videos, maybe uh, explaining what, what's like the commit of the day, what's of the commit of the week. Um, having the like the weekly recap like what i'm doing right now maybe something like that could be and i will be doing this um, similar setup all about the code quest from the blender animation studio so from the blender institute which is the same <laughs> i will be doing it from there so it will be a different setup it will be a different i don't know now i'm at i'm at home so uh, and it's it's 10 p.m so I hope I will be a bit more alive when I'm doing the other ones. And that you can fill in with all the questions you want because I will be surrounded by Blender art. Thank you for subscribing. I will be surrounded by Blender artists, uh, Blender artists and Blender developers mainly for the code quest. So it will be pretty neat. And you can, uh, that, that way you can really get all the questions answered. It's like you, you get a weird technical thing. It's like, okay. Sergey, come over. What is that button in the motion tracker? What does it do? And that kind of stuff. Or, yeah. Hopefully. I mean, can't really bother that much. If you um, ask... Um, yeah, if you ask something nice, like, where is the game engine? Yeah, well, a few things that uh, will be uh, really complicated. So, I think I will be wrapping up. Last week, I asked you if I had a, a, if I were a genie, or I could find a genie, like this Ikea lamp, if I could find a genie, I could ask him, ask her, what is the ultimate feature that you want in Blender? Like, what if, if you could have a wish, one wish, one feature, what would it be? And it's actually pretty interesting. You can, you can check the preview, um, the, the last uh, live stream and you will find pretty nice uh, replies. There is regarding the manual even, like uh, easier to follow manual. And that reminds me of a, of a um, rightclickselect.com thread. Do you know rightclickselect.com? It's not related to the right click or left click selection. It's, uh, it's a very catchy name, but it's about the um, uh, it's about ideas, ideas for Blender, so you can propose your ideas. And one of them is actually pretty interesting. It's about uh, making the tooltips in Blender a bit more, more. Right now, right now they just have a small text, usually one line, not more than that, and uh, it could be better. So this, this, this is the proposal. This is done by artists usually, so. It's, it's more about voting and, and seeing how much support this idea has. And there's also long discussions going on. So um, that is a nice way to start introducing your idea, your proposal. Um, maybe the developer will like will, will see it and then will get excited to, to participate and make it happen. So I think, um, yes, that's all I, I wanted to say. And one, uh, I wanted to ask one question. So, what, what? So you know, you all the add-ons in Blender, all, all the add-ons that exist everywhere, built in in Blender, enabled by default, not enabled by the ones in the Blender market, then any any add-on. If you could include one add-on inside Blender, like you had to to pick one add-on from all of them, um, the ones that are already there, no, like Node Wrangler. I would love for Node Wrangler to be enabled by default. Maybe strip some of the options that are not like super useful for everyone, but some of the things like preview or like switch node. You can have a node and then you can shift S and they will switch the node for whatever other you have. That's amazing. That should be with built-in in Blender. And I think many other add-ons have things like that. 
So what if you could choose one item or maybe a, a, a tool from an item? What if you ask the genie, the IKEA genie, what would it be? Which add-on or which tool from that add-on would you like to include it by default in Blender? Well, what would you like to see? What would your, your dream? So yes, as always, this is just for me to have an idea. I'm not a developer and I don't have the, the, the power to get the, the add-on and just put it there. Um, although you could because it's all the add-ons are GPL, right? They're add-on for Blender. Um, usually they're GPL or if not, they should be because they use the Blender API and blah. That's it. Um, oh, and speaking of a license, there is a Blender.org license and with this, I will be leaving. It's in the blender.org website in about, there is a section that we used to have since forever, the, the license section. And it explains a lot of people don't have this very clear that Blender's license is, it, it's free software. So you basically can do anything with Blender and all that you make is yours. All your artwork is yours. A lot of people still don't know that there is rumors that there are companies saying that no if you, if you use blender everything that you make with blender belongs to blender or you have to make it free you have to if you if you use blender then it has to be free and then that's not the case if you make artwork artwork is yours um add-ons is a different topic but um one of the updates that we make to this page that now it looks much more beautiful thanks to an artwork by reinante martinez this background which I didn't even ask Reinante, sorry, but it's, I'm using this. I'm adding your credit here, by the way, but it's just beautiful. Love your stuff. <laughs> um, privacy and internet access. Uh, Tom added this section the other day because just to make it more clear, Blender never needed your, uh, never needed internet access and it doesn't need internet access right now to work at all. It can work perfect without internet, you know, in one mountain without completely <laughs> disconnected. But it was never mentioned anywhere that this is so important nowadays, right? Privacy is huge. So it's I think it's important for a software as big as Blender that it's downloaded 16,000 times per day, half a million times per month. It's important to say this, to have this uh, statement that Blender does not need internet to work. It, can, it doesn't mess with internet unless you want to. There are add-ons like the Blender Cloud add-on. If you want, if you enable it and use it, it, it will go to the cloud to get the textures, for example. But of course, that needs internet and it's not like it can download all the, well, you can download all the textures to disable it and then you have the textures. But yes, my point is it doesn't need, Blender doesn't need any internet access to work by default out of the box. And that's it. Is there any last question that I can uh animation note oh yeah people are uh, commenting awesome anyway then you can leave the comments and uh, when now that the live stream ends you can leave your suggestions for what is your genie add-on that you will add you will include in blender by default if you could that's it i will see you again next week at the same time same channel same everything and as always We'll get, we're gonna live with style, so I'm gonna call, I need to, I need other, like, give me other songs that I can play at the end, because I always go with the best one. And I will just let it play, because I always turn off the, <laughs> stop the live stream too soon. I will see you again at the, at the same channel. Leave your comments and uh, let's hang out in the comments below, or let's hang out in Blender, the chat of Blender today. Bye-bye and stay curious. <laughs>